before this video starts, I would like to make a few disclaimers, if you will. This uh, video is not overhyped because what will be occurring is possibly truly rare and very interesting. Uh, we could be looking at you know, a very good blocking and it, it, from a meteorological standpoint, is very interesting and possibly rare. I get it that the hurricane that I will forecast later on in the video may not happen, that this may not happen, that it's a long, long range forecast, and I want to put emphasis on that. So don't go around, you know, saying that this is um, not happening. Also, uh, this is uh, not contradictory to what I was saying earlier with August being cool. I think August first 20 days will be chilly. It's just after that, we may start getting a bit warmer, but again, the confidence is low. Also, I do apologize. Uh, during this video, my Tourette is pretty uh, noticeable. I do apologize. I, you know, I can't do anything about it, but people still are mean about it, so I have to apologize. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Yeah, I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. And I'm going to tell you guys that weather, nail never, uh, weather never fails to uh impress me i mean it is we're looking possibly at a very interesting pattern and this uh this pattern will be uh, very 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 interesting i mean it's 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 one of a kind and i don't think I've, maybe there's been once before what some of the models are showing there's gonna be um i i mean We'll just get into this in a minute, but uh, consider subscribing to this channel, consider liking the video, and uh, consider, uh, you know, checking out this channel, and I really do appreciate all the support I've been recently getting, so, so thank you so much, and I really appreciate it. So, right now we're looking at, uh, uh, basically, we're at looking at uh, the GFS model 500 geopotential height and anomaly. And basically what this means uh, is, uh, it just basically shows us where the troughs and the ridges are going to be. And if you don't know uh, what the trough means in meteorology or the ridge, or think of a ridge. A ridge is usually something that goes like this, right? Um, and a trough is usually like, kind of like a, like a hole or like a smiley face kind of and and if you could uh, imagine this on this map you could see uh there's a trough for example right there and you could see there's a ridge right here centered right here and there is the ridge something like that so um basically what this allows is uh cooler air to rush in and in this uh, area wherever you see the blue colors expanding into the green and the darkest uh purple almost that is usually where it's the coolest. And if we go into the looking at the GFS, what we're looking at is a warming pattern. And uh, I'm, you know, G G August still looks uh, fairly chilly for the first half. For the first 15 days, August, like I forecasted and like many others forecasted, uh, is supposed to be rather chilly. And if we look at the 6th to 10 day outlook, you could see 11th through the 15th. And if we were to look at the 1st through the 11th, it'd be rather chilly. You could see they're still showing this below average conditions. Notice how, however, it is uh, becoming a little bit warmer, though. Um, and if we were to look now through this, you could see that uh, this is... Okay, so this is, we're recording this on Monday, it's going to be uploaded Tuesday, and this is Thursday, and you can see there's a trough, cooler air across much of the country, no ridges, um, not really warm across any part of the country. Notice you know, how one comes in on the coast, and this one also brings some cooler conditions for the northwest, this one brings in some, again, some chillier conditions for the northeast, there's another one that starts making its way way up here, but... While that is making its way up there, the, 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 the trough or the ridging, the heat starts building back up uh, into the U.S. And this basically allows for quite a bit of uh, a, a high pressure basically to evolve across the southern U.S. And notice how this initially tried going into the eastern U.S., but it's blocked off by this here right there spinning. And basically what this does is... There's a, a high pressure right here, like we usually do have with heat waves or warmer uh, conditions. And you can see that uh, if we were to draw this out, the winds are spinning around the uh, high pressure uh, 
uh, clockwise and, and if you're and again the this one is spinning counterclockwise so uh, it's tr it doesn't really stand that much of a chance against this uh, there's trying to push each other over it but the high pressure is just stronger and there's also uh, I want to point out a hurricane gonna be out here possibly that the models are showing um, and this is also going to be spinning the high pressure or keeping the high pressure from not moving so this thing is gonna you know center over the west brings chilly conditions to the west while the east warms up and again Again, this is you can see the 19th of August so this is very far away and uh, you know this could still definitely change however this is you know um, many people always say that I am uh, you know that I tend to report more on the cold weather than I do about the warm weather yeah, uh, but you know I'm just telling you right here I do not I mean the the past couple of weeks it's been the cooler weather making the story but now I think towards the end of August or, I mean the CPC climate prediction center is saying it's gonna be cooler I think it may get uh, a little bit warmer. There may be some phases of warmer air. Um, I don't think August will be warm overall, but uh, the first half, again, like I forecasted in my previous videos, is still going to be chilly. It's just that towards the end, <clears throat> towards probably the 15th, maybe like towards the 20th of August, it's going to start getting, you could see, look at that ridging right there building. This could be, uh, this could be a fairly big uh, ridging pattern. And this could, uh, you know, it's almost like if it got re reversed. You know how they always talk about the Greenland blocking pattern? Okay, so that's basically when, see, there's Greenland right there. And if that's uh, usually when we see high pressures uh, uh, setting up over right here south of Greenland, and um, sometimes it's a little bit over here doesn't really matter they're spinning or they're spinning clockwise and are sending the winds like this and this usually keeps uh, a trough a area of cooler uh, air over the US and there's always a second high pressure over here however now there is it's almost different and we have a low pressure right here a low pressure right here and you could see that uh, they're they're blocking and keeping the high pressure in here which could result in some much warmer conditions across the eastern US for um, the third possible week of August and and if we were to uh, further uh, look at this, you know, that's that's how far it goes. But uh, what I mean by further is look at the other models. So let's go look at the uh, European model. And you can see that uh, this this is the European model. It only goes out to 240. Still, again, showing those cool conditions for the first <clears throat> for the first week or two of August. So about the 15th, 16th, it should start changing. And look at that. The European model is also showing a ridging pattern, which you, know, you can see it ridges. The jet stream goes up, and that brings warmer conditions across much of the country, the eastern U.S., but also notice how the European has that fairly vigorous area of low pressure right there. And you can see that uh, that may... Uh, move down if we were to go farther which we can't but if this extended 384 hours out like the Europe GFS then this maybe would um, go down uh, as well uh, you know here and set up a, a warmer pattern so if, let's look at the GFS quickly I want to show you this from a different perspective let's go to uh, uh, let's go let's go to first look at the uh, the European model and then go to GFS all right so uh, hopefully wait for this to load but I wanted to show you this from a different perspective using different maps uh, so you get better understanding of what's going on and we'll wait for this to load right now uh, you could see if we go forward into time we see this a uh, big cooling pattern occur again the hottest of the air is sent down to the south but uh, you know the the warm air or the cool air makes its way down into the uh, southern US as well while the warmer makes its way to the south as well and then we could see uh, towards the end it becomes more zonal and you could see this is basically the same thing I was showing on here with the GFS just a little bit different perspective just zoomed in on the US you know, but you could see uh, there's again uh, we there's gonna be the, the beginning of of a heat wave starting to build across the south and into the US and if we go and if we go even further to the forward time frame we see that cooler air across the northwest beginning to form which obviously the other one showed as well but look at this this is august 20th look at that um this is just beyond me this is possibly one of the most fascinating things that i'm going to be looking at here most this fall because look we have a we have a low pressure trying to make its way down into the into the u.s and it's spinning uh it's spinning 
it's spinning counterclockwise. So what it's doing is sending these winds in a counter uh, in a counterclockwise fashion, and we have a high pressure right here building the heat wave, which is sending in a clockwise pattern. So they're kind of fighting against each other. But you know, usually the low pressure, um, usually uh, systems move from the east. To what or from west to east in the northern hemisphere, so um, the high pressure naturally would move out of its way. However, you can see we have a uh, a, a possible hurricane right here, and this hurricane, uh, you know, it's it's not strong, but it'll be enough to put another low pressure. Uh, a tension on the high pressure and it spins the winds like this again you can see that this would push uh the, keep the high pressure in this area and you know this is very far out but i just want to emphasize that this is uh very possible and this could definitely occur and it's just very very interesting i'll show you the mslp and precip next if you were to look at the MSLP and precip, I want to show you some of these uh, some of these contrasts that are going to be showing here. Uh, so we go through that cooler period of August. We start seeing that warming pattern, and look at this. Uh, look at this. I mean, it's almost uh, as a runway right here. These two, uh, the high pressure, the low pressure spinning against each other. Look how quickly these storms move across this area because there's such a tight gradient. They just get sent up into the north with this and and notice how there's also snow with this the 40 uh, 540 thickness line is right there which means it is below freezing in those areas so yes that doesn't typically occur there at this time of the year so yes that would be uh, you could see with that cooling in the northwest it would be very chilly and we don't know where this would move in the forward time frame but uh you know it could move to the east but as of now uh, you could see that the warm would be dominating the east and it could be a very look at those anomalies very warm across the east and then rather rather you know chilly slash almost cold you know bitter uh, across uh the parts of the northwest where it gets down to in uh, you know parts of north West and southern Canada, where it gets down in parts of Alberta, down into the uh, down into the the, the the 32 degree line, you know, below freezing. So that just you know goes to show you the uh, temperature anomalies that could be occurring with this. And you can see that if we look at the ensemble uh, members GEFS, they're also showing a similar thing, just more gradually, obviously, because there are a bunch of ensembles still showing that chilly air for the first part of August. But then as we go forward into time, you can see 3:30, we see this warming general pattern across the east and the cooling across the west. Now these don't uh, show that much across the northwest but they definitely still show that warmth across the eastern u.s so uh you know very interesting and it's it's possibly a rare occurrence that this could happen so thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider uh subscribing and i'll catch you all guys in the next episode see ya bye